before we start this show, our very first episode, I want you guys to know that Steve Thornberry, he's actually traveling up north. He's leaving the south to avoid religious persecution. Uh, he's he stood up and he's taken the cause, the cause against violent video games. But before we get to Steve and his courageous story of self-sacrifice and survival, I want to start this show off, our first episode, may I add, with a prayer and a Bible verse. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, thank you for everything you've given us. We work hard in spreading your good word. We go up against evils such as violent video games, oversexed teenage girls, so does with homosexual names and references, and a generation lost in sin. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to fight this battle against a world full of sinners. Amen. And the Bible verse I have picked is from Corinthians 11, verse 2 to 3. For I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I bethered you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And that's the theme of today's episode on Stephen versus Stephen. I just came up with that name. The Stephen versus Stephen Christian Hour Podcast. Yes, excellent, beautiful name there. Thank you. By the way, I just want to introduce myself to everybody. My name is Stephen Thornton. Looks like we lost Stephen there for a second. I think he is... He's traveling up north from out south to avoid religious persecution and trolls who've been hassling him for for a while now because he's recently taken up the the fight against violent video games. And as soon as we get Stephen back on... I'll be talking to all you fine folks. He probably went through a tunnel. Hopefully it wasn't one of those promiscuous tunnels that you read about, excuse me, that you read about, you know, in the papers and tabloids and whatnot and on the internet, which is another conflict that we're going to be bringing up soon. Uh, the war on violent video games has, has come to full swing. You know, I've dealt with people in the past who've accused me of being crazy who have called me a loser, who said this cause was nothing more than a joke and that I'm stupid and I shouldn't even be bothering this again. Oh, I, th I think we got Steven back on. Steven? Yeah, hello? <clears throat> Hi, sorry, we lost you there, I think, for a second. Yeah, I was going through this tunnel back here. You know, I'm actually going through Kentucky right now, you know, mm -hmm. going towards the north. Mm -hmm. uh, went through a tunnel. I got stopped by this one black individual, you know, you know, I really can't name him, but, you know, he looked pretty dangerous to me. But anyways, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Stephen Thorntonberry, and I am the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Jasper, Alabama. And I was invited by our dear friend here, our dear brother, Steve Griff, who invited me to his church to spread the gospel and to fight the evil that is violent video games. Mm -hmm. And... You know, my verse, you know, I, you know, I know you said you talked about a verse. You know, I'd like to talk to my favorite verse. Like okay. Fun, you know, video games, stuff like that. Well, I got to look at it up. You know, I have a bunch right here. You know, Ephesians 5.11, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And I believe that me and you are going to expose the evil people in this world who promote all the bad things in the world with violent video games. And with God, we will prevail. Amen. Yes, amen, you know. You know, there are many, many, we got many things to talk about now, don't we? Yes, we do, actually. Uh, I was telling the good people, actually, quite recently, <clears throat> when you got cut off, yeah. that I was called a liar, a loser, crazy for, for picking up picking up the Bible and saying, we do not need violent video games, and violent video games do more damage than anything. And these people are saying, like, saying to me they're you know they're, they're leaving me tweets uh they're sending me emails uh if you want to follow follow me on on twitter you can it's steve griff us uh 
and and these people are just leaving me all these hate filled messages. Here, I'll, I'll read a hate filled message right now, actually. All right. All right. This one comes in from a guy named Chester. I don't know. I've never heard of a man by the name of Chester that wasn't a cheetah. <laughs> that's a little. <laughs> that's a little Bible humor there. Uh, yeah. But but he said to me, he wrote, Steve Griff. I've recently seen your videos on burning video games. You are a bleeping loser. Violent video games have done nothing wrong to anybody. You have to be crazy to burn video games. What is wrong with you? Signed, Chester. Now, I know that's probably not his real name, but I want to bring this up, though. Violent video games are not detrimental to the corruption of the youth. How do you explain Columbine? And all these Muslim attacks in the Western Europe. You know, it's 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 insane to think violent video games don't don't drive people to committing crimes and murder and rape and drug use and drinking it's alcohol you know it's bestiality. yeah bestiality there's another one like you you came out to me and you said to me after i i burned roger rabbit you said steve you are right this game does promote a disgusting disgusting warped sexualization of bestiality and it, it is it is atrocious to, to think that but you know what you play that game all of a sudden you know you're wanting to you know make love to an animal and not a human being like it says in the bible that's a woman you know or a man if you're a woman you know yeah well you see you know just even looking at the cover of that game you know with that woman whatever her name is and that little rabbit you know it's Beal, i think yeah, I think so. You know, Jessica, whatever. Yeah, something like that. You know, I don't keep up. You know, just even look at it. You know, here's how I see it. If a quack like a duck, looks like a duck, it's a duck. You know, exactly. everybody can say it. And, you know, with God, when he sees stuff like that, it just makes me, you know, his anger channels into me, and I just. Good dollar. It's gonna be okay. It, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's just terrible. No. You know what these games are doing to people? It's just, no, you know we can't have that kind of behavior. You know, we can't have man or more whatever. You know, either part human, animals, interspecies, sex. You know, games like that is what gets those pornos started. Mm-hmm. And I've been for two and a half years. I've been on a fight against porno and pornography. As well, I call it porno for short. Porno and the bestiality porn that they have, you know, especially around the world. You know, we've been to different countries doing all that. But I. But anyways, you know, games like that, we can't have that. And another game I'd like to mention that also promotes bestiality, made by a company called Konami or Konami. Something like that. They're called mm -hmm. Tiny Toon Adventures. Busters bust loose. See, that, got... that just sounds perverse. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, you know, you know, we're doing a great, great thing here. But when you look and you see titles like that, like Buster Busting Loose, what is, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? He's busting a seat into a whore. That's what I think. Promote the loot acts. Well, and, well, that, well, that, and, and plus it, it teaches masturbation, which, exactly. as the good book says, you shall never spread your seed onto infertile soil. Exactly. It reverses the verses. It's better to put your seed into the belly of a whore than on the ground. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, things like that. Another thing I have to mention, on the front of the cover, you wear the little rainbow ring thing around there mm -hmm. also a promoter of gay sex homosexuality which is the worst kind of which which is the worst kind of intercourse a human being could ever have a man on man and a woman on woman should not be the thing it's not adam it's not steven you know whatever they whatever they call it like i said i don't keep up you know what i mean oh i know what you mean you know, you know, you brought up a very good point about your crusade against pornography in Jasper. Uh, I know, I know, you've you protested, you you've walked, you've taken to the streets with your parish, and you you have you had a very large parish, and I'm actually quite glad that you're bringing them over, over to my parish, so that we can work together to fight this corruption. Now, 
I, I never took to uh, pornography. I never took to protesting against the sinful, sinful acts of pornography and bestiality porn and uh, homosexual pornography. But I did, I did take to a noble cause. And uh, me with, uh, with as you know, Pastor Hanford, uh, we, we've, we've set up a camp out, out on the outskirts of Millet um, to, to have a camp for wayward teens. Uh, it's actually called uh, it's actually called the Steve Griff Camp for Oversex Teenage Girls, where we keep them yeah. we keep them out in the middle of nowhere. You know, we got some nice cabins, we got some tents, uh, we got lots of stuff donated to us by our uh, followers, and where Hanford and I are there six days a week, trying to break these oversex teenage girls of their of their sin and to teach them sense and sensibility and to have respect for themselves because the human body is God's temple. You wouldn't go into into a church and defecate in the middle of an aisle. So why should you let somebody defecate on your stomach? You know, it's it's kind of like that where we spend hours upon hours going over Bible verses and Bible tales and just pretty much, you know, we, we make them self-sufficient. Uh, we, we've we actually, actually brought into effect a management course, you know, almost like an, a, you know, manage your money kind of situation. And all the girls have been uh, doing very good with that. They've been able to uh, properly manage their money. And, and the best part is we know when we let these girls out, they're going to be able to be self-sufficient, to be self-respectful, and to be independent young women who will no longer fall victim to the acts of human uh, human lust. And we also are doing um, saunas, you know, to kind of sweat out the toxins. Yeah. Uh, so Hanford and I are there with them in this huge sauna hut, and we're just there for eight hours just, just getting all detoxed. And it, it's a wonderful thing, you know. It's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to help help the next generation out, as it were. Yes, those saunas, the, it's a spiritual cleansing. Exactly. You know, whenever you go inside those saunas, you know, all the sin and all the temptation that you have inside of you, it just all sweats away. Oh, exactly. You know, it helps purify your soul, it purifies your core, and it makes you a better person for it. Uh, you know, one, once you come up here, you'll you'll see it, and so will your parish. Uh, it'll be it'll be an event, I tell you. We'll have a huge barbecue, and we'll play we'll play Bible verse bingo, which I think you'll get a kick out of it. Absolutely, I'll have fun with that. Praise Jesus. Pra- praise Jesus and, and and praise the heavens for all those who don't sin. Thank His Son who died on the cross for our sins. Well. You know what, Steve? We're working yeah. towards making him proud of us again. And just like this planet, we just need a little work, a little love, and a helping hand. That's right. You see, with you know, on our mission, you know, if me and you work together, we will make this world so much better <laughs> to the point where we get rid of all the bad in the world. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, at that point, Jesus will be able to come back. Exactly. He'll be able to descend from heaven, look upon us, look upon the Hanford Foundation, look upon look upon me and you and all our followers, and he'll nod and smile and be like, this is what, this is what it's like to have heaven on earth. Exactly. That's what God wants. You know, as much as people say that the world's going to come to an end and the world's going to be destroyed. I believe God wants this to be our heaven on earth. Exactly. And, and you know what, though? It's it's best to have Steve and Steve make it so. Yes, exactly. Make it the best place on earth for Christians. But also for the, the non-Christians as well. You know, I believe that if, you know, if your mind is on the right track, Jesus will forgive you for all your sin, even even if you've played Sonic Spinball or maybe even a little bit of Bayou Billy. You know what I'm saying. 
Oh, I know exactly what you're saying. Uh, there's there's no hesitation. You know, if you've played uh, Mario Brothers, if you've played Tetris, heck, even if you played Monopoly, there is no shame in coming forward and telling us, and we will help you get on track with God. Uh, God helps those that helps themselves. But uh, I wanna I wanna ask you a question, Steve. Yeah. And I know I know it hits really close to home for you, so please please don't take it personally. I know recently you've had a situation with a fellow member of your parish who fell by the wayside due to a violent video game. Do you mind telling us that story? Oh yes. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to talk about because it's it's sad. You know, he goes by the name of George Yarrick. You know, little boy, you know, he, little white strike in his hair, a little bit chubby, but he's a good kid. And, you know, he came up to me, you know, one of my services and asked me, Steve, can you please help me? I'm, I'm like, well, of course, you know, God wants us to help everybody. What's the problem? You know, the problem, he said, he came up to me and told me, it's so hard to talk about. It's okay, Stephen. It's okay. <laughs> he, you know, he fell victim to playing Pokemon Go. And oh, Lord. Those little, you know, the witchcraft has it took over his body, and it, it made him do a lot of sin. You know, the thing about that game I have learned is that not only does it include witchcraft, but cruelty to animals. And with that game, it caught his soul. It caught his soul. And now, he's been into drugs. You know, for a little kid, he's been smoking marijuana. He even shot a few puppies with a BB gun. A terrible thing as well. And the worst thing, you know, he took over his daddy's little TV station and made a little naughty show out of it. It was embarrassed. It was so sad. The the sickening hold that Pokemon Go has on today's on the today's generation, and not a lot of people know this, but did you know that Pokemon Go is the leading cause of autism? in 24 to 32 year old white male and females yes i knew i knew that very well you know because um from my understanding the time period that pokemon came out i want to say the late 90s they call these not you know being an adult i don't understand these names of like 90s kids or whatever they're whatever they are you know and you know, and since then, the entitlement with that has engulfed them into sin. And, you know, if this game has had over millions of downloads on that iTunes store made by Nintendo, and if it keeps getting downloaded, we're going to lose all, the, we're going to lose everybody. We need to do something about this. Leading, not only you said the leading cause of autism, you know, as sad as that is, you know, we, we got to help everybody. We got to do everything we can to get them souls back. We, we honestly have to. Um, I have a few stories. Um, this, this, this is about Pokemon Go also. Um, last Sunday when I was giving, before I gave my service, <clears throat> everybody was sitting down. Uh, Claire starts playing the organ, and and we got these new bay windows, you know. So we let the sun in. It looks it looks majestic. You you you'd be surprised, yeah. And as right before I'm about to say the opening prayer, three 26 year olds, all wearing fedoras, wearing these pony t-shirts, come in, and they start screaming that, you know, oh there's there's Charizards here. Let me let me let me just tell you something, okay? This is the house of God. Yeah. You you do not catch 
dinosaurs in the house of God. I'm sorry, okay? Because dinosaurs honestly don't exist. All right, they're put there to trick us, and and these are fictitious creatures. And seeing these seeing these three twenty-something year old guys on a Sunday who should be at church, may I remind you, or Not worrying, ab- yeah, or worrying about their studies. Uh, instead, they're catching fictitious fictitious uh, creatures on their cell phones, and it's it's actually quite sickening to see as a, as an adult. Capture the words of the devil. Ex- exactly. And the price they're paying for that right now is, uh, as what my grandpa used to say, a little bit too much hydration on the frontal lobes. Uh, but that, but that was my Pokemon Go story. And I've also put into effect uh, searches. You know, if you're going to come in, I don't want you having your cell phone on you to distract you from the Lord, because the devil works in mysterious ways. And his mysterious ways are through cell phones and video games like Pokemon Go. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I, I know you've been wondering what what got me into the crusade against video games. I know you've been wanting me to talk about that, and it's kind of hard for me to do so. But 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 I think I think I I think I will. Uh, I'm gonna tell it. But before okay. we do so, can can you say a quick prayer uh, of protection over us? Because this yeah. is a this is a very dark story, and I don't really want the powers of evil to to try to infest us while I'm telling it. Absolutely, you know. I'll pray about anything for you, as long as we, like I said, with me and you in on this, Mm -hmm. we'll always be protected by our Lord. Thank you, Steve. Let's say prayer. Dear Jesus, I pray to you tonight to protect us and to protect Steve from this story he's fixing to tell us. I want you to understand that we we loved you so much when you died on the cross for us. And just protect us, watch us on our journey, and heighten our senses, and let them know that pull your pull your pop is bad game. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I felt the power, the power of the Lord surge through me with that one, Steve. Absolutely. Would you like to tell your story now? Yes, yes, I would. Uh, this this happened to me about three years ago when I wasn't a a pastor. Uh, back when back when I was still on the on the fence about a lot of things, I still go to church though. I. I, I made it my personal conquest to go to to go to church every day, and I was I was into into some heavy things. I was playing lots of uh, violent video games. I was playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I was smoking menthol cigarettes, and I was I was excuse me I was drinking the devil's orange juice, and. On occasion, I'd smoke the devil's lettuce too, but oh, no. yeah, it was it was. I just do all nighters, where I would just sit down, and and play Call of Duty, and uh, uh, GTAO. I think that's what they call it, uh, where you rob I people. Think so. Yeah, it, it's 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 a, it's one of the worst games out there. And I was playing this uh, Italian game. Uh, they call themselves Super. Mario Brothers, I guess that's what they call them. I never. Uh, Super and, Mario. And I was playing with my friend, uh, who went by the name of Jimmy, and and Jimmy was uh he he was he was a good soul. Uh, he was he was pretty hardcore into it, and so we were we were playing Super Mario Brothers, and we were partaking. Uh, from from the devil's garden, as it were, and and one day, you know, after a few sessions of playing Super Mario Brothers, he looked at me and he said, "Steve, let's go to a pet store." And I was and I looked at him. I was like, "But it's it's 10:30 at night. Like nothing's open." And he looked at me, and I could see the devil in his eyes. He was like, "We have to go to a pet store." I uh, I said to him, "Okay." We were in no condition to drive, but we drove anyways, and it was winter time, so, 
you know, the driving conditions were atrocious. And we came to a pet store on the corner of Main Street. And we got out and we looked over and we saw these, like, animals in the window, like, you know, turtles and bunnies and cockatoos. So, so what happened was that I'm, we're looking at them and I, I look over to Jimmy and I'm like, so what are we doing here? He looks at me and he says, I got a hankering for some Super Mario Brothers. And he picked up the trash can and he smashed the pet store window. And I tried to stop him, but he just went crazy. So what happened was that he started opened up all the enclosures for the turtles and, and rabbits and stuff like that. And he just started stomping on them. And he just kept stomping and stomping and stomping until there was until there was nothing left. Uh, oh, no. I, I, I left, but the cops came and threw Jimmy in, a, in the mental institution out in Pinoca, where he's still there to this day. Oh my lord! It it was, it was the most senseless, senseless act I've ever seen. Uh, turtles were stomped everywhere. Bunny rabbits were were stomped, and I I, I left before the cops came because I couldn't handle it. But I heard from a friend of mine that he tried to skin a couple rabbits and wear them so he could be like this this suit that turns him into stone. And and it's I just I, I don't know like and there's feathers and he's saying I'm gonna fly for an infinite amount of time in a single level and it just it just destroyed him. That's, oh my. That was God. my yeah. That that's how I took to my crusade against violent video games. Well, you know the thing is, you know that was a sign a sign for your calling mm-hmm. in the name calling of the Lord. And the thing is, I actually have a story, too. Uh-oh. I do need you to speak prayer as well. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Lord, give us the strength to combat the forces of evil, to not be to not be tempted by the sins of the flesh, but not be tempted by fictitious worlds that give you free reign to act out against your command. And to give us strength, inner, inner strength, to combat the tools of the devil, used, to, used to corrupt the youth by means of violent video games. And I pray for Steve's soul and a safe journey here. Amen. Amen. I'm ready for my story. Okay, Steve. It was a. Sometime in the 90s, I was one of those pretty boy beboppers, whatever, with the name brand designer clothes. You know, my father, great man, great pastor, made a lot of money from his mega church through the, through the willing donations from the people. Thank you. And I had, you know, I had it all. Until one day, one day, one fateful week, you know, I, the thing is, I used to play video games, mm-hmm. too. You know, I stumbled upon, I think the game is called The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Oh no, that's that's the devil's juice right there, man. That game right there, oh no. You know, I was, you know speaking of devil's juice, you know, there's this one drink I used to have, kind of green, got a red logo, I think it's called something surge soda something like that gave me the rush kind of like it was like a devil's rush it's hard to explain but anyways I sat down and played this video game on the super sneeze mm-hmm. and the most unbelievable thing happened this little fruit wearing a green little dress and a luring little hat with blonde, funky hair. All the doors swinging around like, hey, hey. And it consumed me. You know, I just, at the time, I felt, I fell for it all. So 
swinging around a sword in a forest, killing things for no reason. I got so carried away. So, so the game would talk to you? It talked to me. Was it, was it the voice of Lucifer? It was. The voice of Lucifer. And Jeffrey Hunter. That, that, that's when that's that's when you know you're in trouble, brother. Jeffrey Hunter. That's when the voice of Jeffrey Hunter, who, in my opinion, is the epitome of evil. He he honestly. Even me, though he played. Sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, the voice of Jeffrey Hunter. It's, he played in the greatest story ever told, representative of Jesus, but he was still evil. But I know I'm going off topic. I'm so sorry. But it's anyways, okay. it's okay, Stephen. Takes a voices. takes a brave man to admit when he got tempted. Voices. Yeah. You know, I played the voice. The voice told me to do many, many things. One of them was to cut some trees down. God's nature. The very nature he put on this earth, you know, the very thing he worked for on this soil, one we destroy, kill a bunch of animals, and commit lewd acts. And the secret to all this, I we, I, I promise you, no matter what I tell you, I know God will always love me. Mm-hmm. I'm I am a recovering homosexual. After playing a link to the past, I used to go to the clubs. You I bet you know what happened there. You know. Yeah. I uh, commenced in oral sex. Shower sauna sex. Well, Steve, 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 you, you, you're such a brave man to come, to come here, and and to speak about your past. But the main thing is, you are here because you overcame those demons, and and I'm proud to say that you prayed the gay away. Yes, I did. And. You know that after all that happened, I was accepted back into my father's church. Praise where Jesus! I, where I eventually took over, and as now I am currently that pastor of the First Baptist Church of Jasper, Alabama. Praise the Lord! Praise Jesus! I know my story wasn't much, but no, no, it was much. Thank you. You're welcome. You see, Steve and myself, we we were just like you. You know, we were consumed by sinful acts. We were consumed by the temptress that is violent video games. We we overcame these demons and we decided that we'd work to create the Lord's world women's rights you know there, there is no women's rights in the Bible and we're here to try to restore that we're we're trying to try to erase violence from society you know we got many obstacles like the Muslim faith you know, yeah. you know they are extremely violent um, they keep shouting things. they keep shouting Alan snack bar and and I don't know what that means but it sure scares the Scares the H E double hockey sticks out of me. We we have violent video games that are teaching our kids to collect coins and stomp on stomp on turtles with my friend Jimmy and to steal cars and you know, and try try to stop over sex teenage girls from from committing carnal sin. This is this is what we're fighting against. You know, we you can call us losers or crazy people but when when you look at it it all stems down to violent video games you know 
Mario was collecting coins and killing innocent creatures to save somebody. Yeah. That, that wasn't really into him, you know? And and, and that that's what we're telling our youth is okay. You know, there there's this one game called called Omega A Man or Omega yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I have a friend, his his name is Glenn. He he goes to my church, and I messaged and I met, mentioned him. Sorry, uh, I'm just all wrapped up in tongues here. I can I can feel a surge of God's energy coming through me. Shout out to Baka. Yes. Shout out to Baka to you too, my friend. And Baka. Baka like a high, Heidi Heidi Charlie Ho. We. With Glenn, he's a good soul, but he he's a recovering meth addict, and he used to play Mega Man, and I remember one time he came to my church, he, he hadn't bathed in weeks, his clothes were stained and just, you know, reeked of despair, and he looked at me, and he said, Steve, I've done something horrible, now when you hear those words it makes you it makes you wonder just what that person's done I asked him I was like what is it he told me he was addicted to battle bots and if you haven't seen battle bots it is a horrible horrible show where mankind is playing God and creates these metal creatures that they control battle each other in this octagon and there's the fires from hell and saws and and it just promotes mankind playing God and giving life to these machines instead of teaching them to be independent and to follow the Lord's word no, these men make these machines to destroy each other almost like what you saw in gladiator times back when yeah. Jesus was on this earth and I, I was shocked and I was like Glenn, you can't be watching BattleBots. That 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 goes against God's word. And he looked at me and he says, "That's not the worst thing ever." I was like, "What? What's the matter?" He was also playing Battletoads and Mega Man, and and he he just kept telling me, "He's like, every once every once in a while, I'll go to the park to get another fix, and there's these giant toads, and I just see them, and." And it's like, it's like I've seen them before, Steve. Yeah. And that's, and after that I was like, no, you're going to the, you're going to the Griff Detox Center. Yeah, it's in the basement of uh, my parish, everyone. At, at the New Life Church. And because we do breathe new life into you, we do take away do take away all the sin and temptation and breathe new life into you and that new life is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and it took two weeks to get Glenn off of the meth and after we did so we did a little test Steve uh, yeah. Hanford Pastor Hanford uh, who also works at the church who you will be meeting when you get here Amen. He, he put in he put in battle toads and Glenn looked at it, and he said, I am not touching this debacle of Satan's refuge. And it was it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling to know that we were able to stomp out Satan out of this, out of this vessel known as Glenn. Amen. Amen. That's great. You know, you gotta stomp Satan. Even if it's your friends, you gotta stomp Satan out of that. You know, stomp it out, stomp it out of your friends, stomp it out of your family. Mm-hmm. We gotta do God's work. You know, interesting you brought up battle toads. I, you know, we were holding a little telethon. You know, we we on our little public access channel back in in Jasper. You know, we got a lot of calls from people asking us if we had battle toads. No. I'm like, well, what, what is, what, what on earth is battle toads? You know, I don't even know what that is. And you know, and then he started saying, how do magnets work? And you know, that, that was really confusing to me as well because you know, I don't even believe in evolution. 
because, you know, God, you know, that's a bunch of horse dookie. You know, but kept asking lots of things. He said, because I asked him, what does this have to do with God's word? And he said, well, it's, it's important, and I figured I need help with it. And I'm like, well, you know what? You're playing games with God. Hung up on him, you know. Ridiculous people. But, you know, another story that I have, I was in line, you know, you know, I, you know, I'm willing to admit this as well, but my wife, you know, she plays video games, you know, and I tell her many times not to do it. You know, she plays Super Mario Brothers, jumping on mushrooms and stuff, you know, downright despicable and really, really violent. Mm -hmm. You know, I try hiding it from her all the time, and she always finds it. Well, anyways, I was in line at a place called G Stop, GameStop, something like that. Mm hmm. I had to get, I got her a game, you know, she wanted the game, and I hate supporting that. One day she'll learn. There was this big, big feller, stalky guy. I know you mentioned fedoras. Yes. You know, the hat of Satan. He had that on. He smelled like something they called Doritos and a big bag of cheaters. It was so nasty. He turns around with his big beard, and he just started asking me, you know, started asking me stuff like, you know anything about this game? I'm like, well, I don't like video games, you know, because God doesn't want me be want me to be playing these terrible, sinful things. He's like, well, you know what? Santa's fake just like God is. One of the most fuck... Oh, my, my Lord. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to say that. God, God just... Forgive me, Lord. He forgives you. I'm because so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Steve. It's okay. Let me tell you something. God forgives you because God loves you. And he knows you're picking up the good fight. You know, when people say God isn't real, it's he's real to us. Gosh darn it. Yes, darn it. It's okay. Carry on. Mother farther. Man, I, I lost my train of thought. I apologize. Well, well, if it, you know, if it's okay for me to speak, Stephen. It's all right. I know it's going to be a little bit confusing since you are a pastor and I'm a pastor and we have Hanford, who is also a pastor. He, uh, but let me tell you a little something about this Hanford character before you meet him because he's a character. He, he immigrated uh, here from North Korea. He's a refugee. Uh, he was a... Uh, I'm not going to say who who he was related to, but let's say he was pretty high up. And so he, he fled because he found the Lord. And when he came here, he ran into me because he was taking my order at the local Chinese food restaurant. And... We became talking, and we became friends, and ever since then, Pastor Hanford has been has been working for us nonstop. I want to say that for the cause, for our cause, Steve. Now that we're going to be working together, Hanford yeah. has raised over eighteen thousand dollars in a few weeks alone. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen to Hanford. He's a He's a wonderful feller. We're going to be trying to trying to get him on too. Uh, he's busy tonight. He's 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 over at the uh, the camp for over oh. sixteen girls, and he's oh. he's doing an all nighter, and he's helping them wash their sins away. You know that that guy, I'm telling you, he's works swell. nonstop for the Lord, and it shows. He's, that's a swell guy right there. You know, he's got God's dedication, you know, just like Jesus, going around, preaching the word. Hanford, you're doing good. You're doing God's work, and we want you to continue to spread the gospel all over the world. And and that's why we're doing this here, everybody. This is why Steve and I and Hanford are doing this. We're, we're spreading God's word. And we're helping those who can't help themselves. You know, uh, it's 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 funny, but this is the real us. Steve and myself, Hanford, like 
this is the re like we're really like this. This is this is the real us. You know, you hey, can no exactly, you know. Right now, Steve is driving through Kentucky to evade religious persecution. Because nobody really knows the plight that we are all facing. The second you go on the internet, or the second you tell somebody who's a video game player that video games are the craft the craft tools of the devil. And they'll look at you and think you're an idiot. But all you gotta do is bring up Columbine. Because those kids took violent video games. Those kids started murdering innocent people. And what bothers me the most about this is nobody will ever touch on that issue. They'll blame they'll blame this innocent woman, Marilyn, I don't know her last name. Uh, but they won't blame the violent video games. And and with 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 the crusade that we're we're fighting here, this is our holy war. Is violent video games, uh, violent Muslims and women's rights, is that we're taking well well, I'm taking some video games and I'm burning them, and people are 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 going crazy. You know, look at the comments from from the Super Mario Brothers video I burnt, I did where I was burning the game, or Sonic 2 has almost 15,000 views, or uh, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit ones. Like, pe people have a disease, and that disease is the devil. And Steve, myself, and Hanford were the cure to the devil. We Praise are, Jesus. Praise Jesus. We are the answer. We are the answer. The chosen ones. Exactly. And believe me when I say this, you just wait till the next video game I decide to burn. I've got a whole box of them, and one of them's going to burn. I also received a donation as well that I've got with me in my car. Oh, please share it. Oh, okay. One of the games that we have, uh, you know, I got a whole stack of them right here. Backseat. I'm at a stop sign. Because we believe in driving safely too in our church. Yeah, we drive safe for Jesus. Yeah. All right, these some of these games. Uh, one of them, Cyborg Justice. I know you mentioned Battle Bots. Yes. You know, people trying to play God. Well, this game right here. You know, it's like Battle Bots, but. It, the whole BattleBots thing take, taking over the world. And the whole world tries to play God by, not only that, by building these things, but fighting each other with them. Mm -hmm. Another promoter of violence. I believe the game's called Cyborg Justice. Yeah, Cyborg Justice. You know, they got little saw blades. They fight each other. It's so bad. In another game, I apologize, were you going to say something? Oh, I, I, I can wait till you're finished. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. This game called WWF Royal Rumble. You got all these muscly guys on the front of the cover. I believe one of them's Hulk Hogan. I think mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan. And a few other guys. Sweaty, muscly guys covered in oil. And, you know, that just tells me something. You know, not me something. Sorry, if you hear any noise in the background, you know... I'm just starting to move on. I'm trying to pick each copy here. You know, I'm on the road. But anyways, these muscly guys, and, you know, it, it's tantalizing something. You know, not only for gay men, but also women. These guys, you know, they're looking at each other like they want to get on, get it on with all these people. And we can't have, you know, that kind of sexual intuition or something, whatever you call it, the sexual engagement and stuff like that. You know, they're looking at you like, hey, you want to go? And like, Not me. I have Jesus in my heart. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I'm, all right, another game. What, well, actually, I won't tell you all, but here's one more game. It's called uh, um, uh, Cool Spot. You know, this red little guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a little dot. You know, I think, he, I believe he's the dot on the 7-Up bottle. You know, I believe that's the backstory. In that, you know, it amazes me, that little red dot. You know what that means? What? Another thing God doesn't like is communism. You know, the Japs, the Japanese people, made this game. To, they conspired together 
to dispel Satan's glory with communism. I believe y'all wouldn't be surprised if the North Koreans were involved with this. You throw balls at people, which is also pretty homosexual to me as well. Pretty much, that's just some of the games that I'm ready to burn here in a couple days. When you're up here with me, of course. Absolutely. I actually have a few games, too. I've got a huge box of Nintendo games. Okay. I also have a handheld Double Dragon by Tiger Electronics. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I've got some, some games called Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Uh, it has a K in it. I don't know if it's Russian. Mortal Kombat? Yeah. I don't know if it's Russian because it has a K in it. But in it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty perverse. You get to beat women up. And in our church, uh, the New Life Church, I want you guys to know that the only right women have is to follow the good word. But but it's really violent. Like, I'm looking at the back. I, I got another one here. Where's Waldo? Uh, I don't I don't know what this is about. It's for it's for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I think you have to find some guy in glasses who may or may not be who may or may not be uh, a sinner. But we also have some other games here like Monopoly and, and and Primal Rage, where you get to fight as a dinosaur. I, I want you. I want to be stern with you guys. We do not believe in dinosaurs at our at our church, the New Life Church. We do not believe in dinosaurs. Evolution's a bad thing. Evolution is the devil's way of confusing you to get you off the beaten path of Jesus' love. And and it sickens me, you know. I got one here's Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. That's gonna burn. Burn one, it. Yeah, that's gonna be the next one I burn. Now I've been getting a lot of requests too, from from these fine folks on on Twitter, uh, you know, saying I should I should track down a copy of Doom and set fire to that one too. And I think I just might. Doom is what calls Columbine. That caused Columbine. It was the most sad thing in the world. It was terrible. You know, some people say violent video games do nothing. But may I also remind you of something called 9-11? Oh my god. Not the Indians. Yeah, it was, it was tragic. But, but I'm getting the, the old sign from, from Claire. She's the organist uh, at, at her parish. And uh, she's, she's telling me, what is it? Oh, okay. All right. I'll be right there. But it's time to go, buddy. Oh, really? Well, I guess I could tell her to, to keep us. What, what's the situation? Okay. Well, you know, you can just just tell them to wait a bit. Do Do you want to go, Steve, or or do you want to? If it's God's word, then we can go. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Do you have anything you want to want to add to this uh, to this to our first episode? May I add? And let me also say one thing too. Huh? That we do not believe in doing drugs. We we don't drink alcohol except for except for wine. Uh, we Commun- communion wine, yes, and and we do a lot of outreach for the community. Beautiful outreach. Beautiful outreach program. We got the the camp that we run to, Steve. Uh, we have a nice room made up in our church's basement for you and your wife. Uh, oh, that's just... Thank you. Han- Hanford and Claire have gone to the trouble of decorating it for you guys. And we also have a barn, uh, which I know sounds sounds horrible, but it's just on the outskirts right where I live, out in the country, for, 
for your followers. Uh, we we also had it um, had it fixed up so that it's light. So there's a bunch of apartments in there and everything's working and, and it's wonderful. That's beautiful. Nice. So but, you know I have. Sorry. You go ahead. I was gonna say. You can't see me, but I'm holding my hand out to you because I know you're driving. But don't hold your hand out because you have to have two hands on the wheel. You, you don't you don't want to die like Paul Skywalker. Uh, yeah. Will you join me in the crusade against violent video games, over sex teens, homosexual branded soda, and violent Muslims? Absolutely. Amen. That's our confirmation of our journey. Yes. And I have one, like I said, I have one more final verse to read, and I can end this end this all with prayer. As I will also end it in a verse and a prayer too. Absolutely, I got it here. Do not let math. And by the way, Matthew six nineteen twelve twenty not actually Matthew six nineteen twenty one. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy. Moth must destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is there your heart will be also. And here's my prayer. Here, Lord. We want to thank you so much for strength and courage to make our very first episode. You know, thank you. We want to also thank you as well for confirming our journey to ending video game violence. We just want to thank you for all the things that you have done for us, telling, teaching us the difference between wrong and right, and giving us the will to believe that we are the chosen one. Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And I want to read my Bible verse uh, to commemorate. Whoa, the hounds of hell are barking. Oh, but I want to read my Bible verse from Isaiah 60 18. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation of or destruction within your borders you shall call your ways salvation and your gates praise. Praising the gates now, people. We're praising the gates now. And I want to end with my prayer. A prayer of thank you to Steve, Hanford, and to all those who believe in our combat for this conflict. Praying for you, George Yared. And I'm praying for you, George Yared. And I'm praying for you, Steve. And I'm praying for Glenn and Jimmy and Hanford. And praying for, praying for you, buddy. Dear Lord, give us the strength to combat evil, and let's open our arms with tender love and care for our brothers who combat against evil. In your name, Lord, amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us on our first episode of Stephen vs. Stephen, the Christian podcast. I want to thank you all for joining us, and you have a safe drive to your new promised land, Steve. Thank you. Amen. Amen.